Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algie, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. Hey folks, this is episode number 338 of the Ages of Rock podcast, and this week we are going to talk about uh, some top cover songs that we like. We're going to do a list of 10. They're not necessarily our top 10 favorite cover songs, but you know, some of us kept changing our list around, and that's how it rolls around here. Y'all know us. Anyway, right here is my host, co-host Bill. Right there is my co-host Dennis. And up above me here is uh, my good friend. I've known him for about 25 years now. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Humphrey. He is also co-owner of A to Z Radio with myself and uh, Lil Willie, also known as uh, Bill Elam. How you doing, Jeff? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, this is going to be a fun episode. And uh, if Dennis and Bill don't fuck it up, we're going to turn it into a radio show, too. Ooh. That's a good oh, chance that's that going to happen. Do what? There's a good chance that's going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen whether we <laughs> fuck it up or not. <laughs> so anyway, before, we can curse. <laughs> but before we get into it, um, we Bill did the interview with Todd last week, so we haven't had a chance to catch up on uh, late news lately. But uh, on January 11th, we lost Jeff Beck at the age of 78. Um, Lisa Marie Presley passed on. January 12th, she was 54. Robbie Bachman, little brother and drummer of Bachman Turner Overdrive, he also passed away on January 12th. And January 19th, um, David Crosby passed away at the age of 81. It's been a bad run for January so far. Yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> I, I, you know, we had this discussion back in 2016. You know, all of our heroes are getting up there in age. You know, obviously the exception being Lisa Marie, she's a couple years older than me, but, um, you know, she had some problems in her past and I'm sure that contributed to, yeah. you know, whatever, but, um, it's, it's just going to be that way, whether we like it or not, you know, we all get old and die. If we're lucky, we get old and die. Unfortunately, it's happening to people that we love and respect. So uh, let's move on to something a little more bright. Has anybody? Well, too, well you got to say something about David Crosby. He had nine lives. I mean, that dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's he's lucky to win as far as he did. I mean, oh, but he had this complete... is true. You know, I, mean, I know I mean, he, he had, is. He had that liver transplant. Yeah, so he he's... had at least one. I don't know if he had m multiple liver transplants. He's had multiple issues for Phil a long Collins, time. He, Collins, yeah, I actually. think, paid for that too. Say that again, wow. Jeff. I think Phil Collins paid for that liver transplant for him too. Really? Yeah, I, I know that when he got real sick, he was at a low point. Yeah, and was that just damn near destitute. Yeah, right. But anyway, on to some more fun stuff. Anybody go to any concerts or any any exciting record buys or anything this week? No record no. buys this week. Missed right. seeing uh, our friends at uh, Hairbangers Ball last night. I thought, you know what? I mm. think I might be able to make that show. Nope. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to get my ass kicked. <laughs> so that's a no. <laughs> I, I actually went to see a band called King Buffalo. They're kind of like stoner rock, neo psychedelic. And that also created a um, record purchase from them. Oh, as well. nice. So they were playing at the hi fi here in Indy, about, eh, about four or 500 people, but packed and really great show. Best that's sound nice. I've heard at an indie show in a long time. It was like loud and clear. So I was really surprised at how good they played and how great it sounded. Yeah. You usually get loud or clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Don't so let, let me ask you this. Did you notice, did they have amps on stage or were they all direct? They had amps on stage. Cool. Yeah. Usually that, you know, what makes it not loud is everybody fights to have their amp louder than the next guy or whatever. And then just, yep. It well, it's cool. it, they're a trio, so it's yeah. like, you know, you had the bass player doing his thing, drummer doing his thing. Uh, guitarist also had a um, synthesizer up there, just to play some background tracks. Cool. 
but just a really tight band, really great. I exceeded my expectations seeing them live. I've you know listened to some of their studio stuff, but live was amazing. Cool. That's always uh, good to find. That's always good to run across a nugget like that. Well, Laura and I went to see Old Dominion here in Evansville at the Ford Center on Thursday, January 19th. And, you know, I'm not, even though I'm in a country band, I'm not a huge country fan. But Old Dominion, I have seen them before, and they always put on a great show. They are also songwriters, and they've written for other artists such as, you know, Derek Bentley, Kenny Chesney, Jason Aldean. Um, and they they have a little segment in their show about halfway through the show where they sat down and they was like, and what they did at this show, and I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself already, which is unsurprising. Um, they had this huge background screen, which the light show was phenomenal. The background screen that they had and, you know, they music videos and, you know, starry nights and ocean waves and all that stuff in the background was really cool. But about halfway through the show, they put the lights down and then they put this thing up that looked like one of those time life infomercials, you know, and then you get this guy and this girl in this old truck talking and doing that stupid cheesy ass. Oh, do you remember when this blah, blah, you know, and then uh, they went through maybe eight, eight or nine songs that they had written and sang segments of these songs, like a verse of a Kenny Chesney song. This guy wrote it, so he sang it. And then a verse of the Dierks Bentley song, and they did that. That you know, they did that. That was really cool. It was cheesy, but it was it was well put together cheesy, and it made it really funny. But cool. uh, if you ever get a chance to go see Old Dominion in concert, they are a a very they're a fun band on stage. They don't sit still. You know, they're good storytellers. Uh, they did start the tour in Evansville, which we didn't realize that that was happening. So. You know, I was I was impressed. And usually, when a sh you see the first night of a show, they're still ironing out technical difficulties and stuff. And with the exception of near the end of the show, there was a little bit of feedback. That show went off without a hitch. It was great. Cool. You know, and they cool. did. Uh, they had three opening acts, but what was interesting about that was all three opening artists had the same backing band. So hmm. each. If the first artist was um, a guy by the name of Graylin James, G-R-E-Y-L-A-N. And um, he played for about 20 minutes, you know, and uh, the, the funniest thing, which it wasn't funny to him, I'm sure, but his guitar strap came loose on him when he had uh, bent down to high five somebody or something. But he did a really good job. The second um, act to come on was a girl named Cassie Ashton, K-A-S-S-I. A S H T O N her first song that she did, she was singing about taxidermy and I, you know, the lyrics to the song are pretty funny, but as soon as I heard taxidermy, I turned around and looked at Laura and I said, she's singing about taxidermy because she wants somebody to stuff her beaver. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that's not what that song was about at all, but I had to get that little funny jab in there and she's got a new single coming out on in february and it's called drive you wild and that song was really good so uh bill elam get ready because that's going to be a fresh cut on a to z radio and the uh the third act was a guy named frank ray and um his big song that i really liked was a song called tequila mockingbird you know which is a play on words mm -hmm. it was a great song he also one of them also did a song Dang, it was about whiskey, and I, I, I forgot to write it down. Uh, oh, she's drinking someone else's whiskey now. Wonder what that's about. <laughs> but that was a pretty good song too. That's one thing I like about country music. You know, is there's usually some pretty good, or at least some entertaining to me storytelling in those songs. But uh, the last thing I'm going to say about this is the the backing band. I guess there is a bar somewhere in Nashville. And they do a thing called Whiskey Jam. Mm -hmm. And Old Dominion used to go and do this Whiskey Jam thing or whatever. And it's kind of like an open mic night, I guess. But um, the guys in Old Dominion told this band that does Whiskey Jam, you know, find three of these artists that you think are the best. And y'all come on the road with us. 
So that mm-hmm. that's why they had all three had the backing band. But it was really cool, you know, because each artist would sing for 20 minutes and then there'd be like a two minute break and then the next one would come up and then 20 minutes and the two minute break, such like that. And um, that was kind of cool, you know. That's neat. So, yeah, if if you are into country music, Google Whiskey Jam Nashville and check that out because that was that was really kind of interesting, you know. That Whiskey Jam backing band, I think that was their name. Um, they were really good too, you know, and, you know, kind of like our friends, you know, Ryan and Jeremy and Phil, all those guys, they could play anything. You just tell them what key it's in and they go. It was really cool. Hmm. Neat. So that's cool. Let's get started with, uh, I I got one, I got one quick thing I just thought about. Speaking of country music, I have been watching on Showtime, the George and Tammy miniseries. I'm now three episodes into the six. Oh yeah. Very, very well done uh show. Yeah. What I did I do find interesting is that the guy and girl who play George and Tammy are actually singing their own song. I mean, they're actually it's their voices and they do oh, a very good job. That's uh, really cool. The guy I can't I can't think of his name. I, I should have his out, but I didn't. I just thought of it last minute. But the guy, he's a well known actor and he does a really good job, but the girl who plays Tammy has got a fantastic voice. And I went back last night, actually, after watching it, Kelly went to bed early or after the show, and I got on YouTube and was watching some old Tammy Wynette video. And I mean, she's got mannerisms, infl- it, it, she's got it. She's steady. <laughs> she did. Homework. And it's really, 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 it's a really good show. And George Jones is one wild motherfucker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he could have been a Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah. I had yeah, heard Lauren some stories the- about him. Laura and I watched the first two episodes of that. And we haven't picked that back up yet. Yeah, I don't it's, know that it's, she's interested in it, but I'll probably right. finish watching the rest of you it. No, I'm not a country fan, but I like the stories and stuff. And I'd heard some George Jones stories, and I'm telling you oh, what, yeah. that dude was a fucking. I mean, they were. It was, it was no show Jones. I mean, yeah. you never knew if he was going to show up. Yeah, you know, he'd be at a he'd be at a venue getting ready to go on, and he'd show up the next morning three states away. Never played the show the night before. He was <laughs> drunk as shit and some, you know, just in the middle of nowhere. You know, so that dude, he's a wild man. But anyway, it's it's it is a really good show. It, it's not you don't have to be a country fan. It's just an interesting story. So anyway, right on. All right, we ready to All jump right, into so. this? Let's do it. Let's go. All right, folks. This is still episode number three hundred and eighty, <laughs> three hundred thirty eight. God damn it! <laughs> episode number three hundred and thirty eight. 10 cover songs that we like. And we're going to start with my esteemed colleague, Jeff Humphrey. All right. That's your number 10. Well, my, and I, I think we're doing this like no particular order, but it's just number 10 on the list. Um, the, Van Halen did a ton of covers, <laughs> uh, but to me, the best one is uh, You're No Good. Just because they, they yeah. made it their own and the, the guitar work in it at the beginning, bass work, just fantastic. So that's right up there for me. Right. Oh, I do like that song a lot. I didn't put it on my list, but I do like that song. Dennis. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to play this different because I am going to, I did, I spent a lot of time in switching these some bitches around in order. So I'm going to go <laughs> top 10 and this is top. And I have some, I have some, uh, some honorable mentions too. All right, number 10 on my list is Anthrax is a band who have done a shit ton of covers, and they're very, very, very good at it. They're unbelievably good at it. And this one here I had not heard before because I had one that I was going to put in, and I ended up coming out. And that, but they do a version of Carry On Wayward Son by Kansas that is fantastic, and that is my number 10. Uh, the honorable mention on that was Parasite because that's one of my favorite Kiss songs. They do a great version of Parasite, but Carry On Your Wayward Son is a great one. Anyway, I'm going to have to check that one out because I had not. I've heard a bunch of their covers, but I have not heard that one. Yes. It's your turn, Bill. All right. I am not in any order because I wrote the list like three different ways, three different times and added some stuff. So (laughs) I'm not in any kind of order, but I'm going to start with uh, whiskey in the jar and um, i'm starting with that so that originally was run was done by a, a band called the dublins in 1960 then covered uh in 1970 with uh thin lizzie right. but the one the version i really like the best is the metallica version from 1998 so that is uh just the the groove to that and it, it has a, a little a lot different feel 
Um, it, it definitely got metallicized. We're going to go with that word. <laughs> I um, like that. Because you can tell it did. But it's just, it's just a great song. Um, and uh, just got a good beat to it, stuff like that. Love it. You want to hear uh, a little more trivia about that song? Sure. That's an old Irish folk song from like the 15 or 1600s. Oh, okay. Well, I, the when I did the research, it said it was written by the Dublins in 1960. Oh, well, they were the first ones that did it. I that yeah. was I did a cover song show on A to Z Radio a couple of weeks ago, and that was one of the songs that got featured. Cool. Yeah, it was neat. I listened to that original song, so yeah, kind of interesting. Well, that makes one of us. I listened to the Thin Lizzy version and the Metallica version. <laughs> no, I just wanted to hear what saying, it sounded like. So that's that's not all three I've sound never, different. That's not I think saying the technicality the... on that is that was the first arrangement, right? That was done in that method, right? But uh, I'm not saying I've never heard the Deb, the Dubliners version. I'm stuttering here. Good lord! <laughs> I'm not saying I never heard the Dubliners version of that. I just don't remember ever hearing it. Yeah. All right. Uh, my number ten is kind of an for mainstream people. It's kind of an off the wall one because if you're not a Devo fan, you probably don't know anything other than Whip It. But um, my number ten pick is a. Uh, Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones, covered by Devo. Uh, they totally made that song their own. It's a great song. And, I like that. That's interesting. The video's yeah. really good, too. The guy yeah, flips. Jeff, Jeff can probably tell us which album that's on. Are we not men? We are Devo. That's yes. it. <laughs> Jeff might or might not be a huge With the Devo. Chi-Chi Rodriguez on the front cover. Chi-Chi yeah. Ty Ty Rodriguez? Yes. I've been watching WKRP. Yeah, teeing that up for you. There you go. <laughs> All right, Jeff, what's your number nine? Number nine, and it's one of those, it's like people are, that, that's a cover song, is uh, Ram Jam, Black Betty. It was yeah. originally a blues tune by uh, Lead Belly. Actually, too, if you go on YouTube, there is a, it was actually a slave working yep. uh, chain gang song, yep. and they actually have a recording. It's a very, very early recording before that one. Uh, actually, in the chant version of it. Yeah, I, I was like you. I was like, I didn't know that was a cover tune. Yeah, and that actually just made I made the list because it popped on the radio on the way home yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no, I got to put this one on, and it actually knocked off Devo. <laughs> so, oh, that's oh funny. wow! <laughs> well, you have to throw Devo in your honorable mentions. Okay, there you go, Dennis. Okay, I am gonna go with my uh, next one, which is Johnny Cash's version of Hurt. And that was a cover. Yeah. And actually, he I like his song better than the nail, Nine Inch Nails version. <laughs> it's in the video. You watch the video and you listen to the song. It's a, it's a, it's Pretty a gut wrencher. It's very yeah. powerful. It's great. I, it's great I read somewhere on the internet, so it must be true that Trent Reznor said that was no longer his song. That Johnny, that was Johnny's mm -hmm. song. Now I've heard that too. And Johnny's so frail at that point too. That's toward the you know very close to the end of his life, and it that's just much it, it went the video. It just wraps up, dude. It, it'll it'll choke you up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bill. All right. Uh, my next one is uh, "Sweet Dreams Are Made of This," uh, originally by the Eurythmics in 1983, but this is the Marilyn Manson cover. And I'm not a big Marilyn Manson fan, but that song is just he turns that into this demonic evil nasty badass song <laughs> this is what happens it just it's just amazing and the video is just creeps the shit out of you <laughs> so you know it's going to be interesting to see how many of y'all's picks ends up on the show that i did a couple of weeks ago <laughs> because that was one of the songs that ended up on there and what was interesting to me was that song ended up on a soundtrack for the mm -hmm. movie about the people in Enron when that big controversy or scandal was going on. Right. Oh, huh. so interesting. No, more useless trivia for you. There you go. Full of it today. Full of something. Yeah. All right. My number nine pick comes from the movie soundtrack shocker, which came out in like 1989 or 90 or something like that. You know, if you've never seen that movie, it's cheesy as fuck, but it's a great movie. I love that movie. Uh, 
Megadeth did a cover of Alice Cooper's No More Mr. Nice Guy. And Megadeth, or yes, Megadeth is one of those hard rocking bands. And I've got a couple more in this group that, uh, while I may not be a huge fan of their music, I am a huge fan of their covers. Because, you know, I've heard several songs that Mega Dave has covered, and they've been some great covers. But this No More Mr. Nice Guy is my number one Mega Death cover song. Cool. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Uh, and, and this one, uh, I think, um, Bill, I think we saw this, saw this done uh, back in May last year. Rick Springfield, I've done everything for you. That's another one where I think Sammy has said, yeah, that's his. Yep. Good Great tune. tune. Great tune. Yeah. He'll be brought up later. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and the fact Jesse's that... Jesse's Girl is not a cover, Dennis. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the fact that it, it shows how good of a guitar player he is. I mean, he's really underrated. I, he's underrated work. as he's a musician fantastic. in general. Yep. Except the guy, who, the guy who owned uh, Soul or Sound City. Which my dude, old Tom, didn't think so. That's why Jesse's girl is actually um, that is um, Pat Benatar's husband playing guitar on it because <laughs> he didn't like Rick Springfield's guitar playing. <laughs> but well, he is very look underrated. How many of those, underrated. Look how many studio albums have been put out, right? And then you find out later that person that you thought was playing lead guitar on there is not. Right. Like Creatures of the Night, the yeah, I was like say, on that. There's a few. There's one of is, our bands. Is the yeah. dude from um, one of them 80s pop bands. I'm drawing right. a blank on it now. No, but, I'm uh, a big Rick Springfield fan. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm seeing him Friday night. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. Damn it. We're, we're at Brown County. Brown County. Right on. Damn. I'd like to see that. Fuck. Yep. One, one more stupid piece of useless trivia for you. Do you know who does the guitar solo on Cherry Pie? Uh, no. CC DeVille. Really? That part where they say train professional after the right. solo's over? Uh, no. <laughs> Makes more sense. I, it's on the internet. It must be true. <laughs> Might be. Didn't know that. Might be. Might be. All right, Dennis, you're number eight. All right. So my number eight comes from a album that I didn't know existed till a couple years ago. And it's an album called A Salute to Aerosmith. And this is the song Dream On. And the guitar player in it is Inve Malmsteen. And the singer is Ronnie James Dio. Dio. And it is a very, very haunting. And I, I, about a three minute song is about what I can take Inve for. <laughs> and it works, fits <laughs> perfect because any more of that, the noodle and gets a little bit too much. But it's very, very, very well done. And of course, Ronnie James Dio's voice on that is just. He just changes that song. It's it's very haunting, and if you get a chance, to, it's on Spotify. And and actually, this everything I'm talking about right now, I do have a covers list on Spotify already made. So I've been listening. So if you want to just follow me on Spotify, you can see that covers list and hear all the songs I'm talking about. Played that song on my show the other night, and that was Great actually song. by a request that somebody that was listening at the cool. time. So. Cool. That, that show that I put together ended up being about half of stuff that I threw in there and about half of stuff that people that were tuned in were saying, hey, you got this one? Hey, you got this one? Sure. Didn't cool. even know that was a cover. <laughs> cool. Bill. All right. Uh, my next one is uh, Sound of Silence. Um, Simon and Garfunkel did it in 1964 and Disturbed did it a shit ton better in 2015. You're wrong. <laughs> okay. Bill, have you heard the version of that with him and Miles Kennedy? With uh, the guy from Disturbed and Miles Kennedy? Yes. No. There is a version of that too, live, and you need oh, to listen okay. to that. They sing cool. when they're singing together. You know how Miles' voice is. Yeah. And their two voices together is Kelly. I never knew existed about a month ago. And Kelly, like, oh, you got to hear this. Wow. Check that out. It's on YouTube. Okay. I have to yeah. find it. Yeah. Yeah. That was. Another... Yeah, I like his voice a lot. It's cool. Yeah, but... it's really good. That was another request from my show the other night. So y'all are, y'all are just killing it. <laughs> All right. My number, we're on number eight now, correct? Um, mm, yes. Metallica. I love Metallica. I love Metallica as a cover band. They have got some great covers. And my Metallica pick for this show is Am I Evil, which was originally done by Diamond Head. Is that mm. right? Diamond Head. <laughs> okay. I don't know. And that um, 
I didn't know that was a cover because, you know, the, the first time I got the Kill 'em All album, it was a cassette and it was a reissue and that had uh, Blitzkrieg is a cover and so is Am I Evil. So I got that on cassette, didn't know either one of those were covers. And then when I bought it on CD years later, I'm like, where'd those songs go? You know, because they didn't want to pay licenses for the reissues. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. All right. Um, what's your number seven, Mr. Speedway? Um uh, this one, yeah. I yeah, I hesitated to put anything KISS related <laughs> just because, but I had to go, I have to put New York group on here. Um KISS or Ace Freely. It's really Ace. Yeah. Um right. but you know, that was uh, was it Russ Ballard, I think. And I think there's another band that Correct. covered it like Hello or something like that. Yep, they covered it. Exactly in, yeah, they covered it in uh, 1975, right before Ace put it out in 80, yeah. 78. Yep, but Ace Ace kills on that. I mean, it's just well done, very well done. I probably have mentioned this before, but that was one song that I did not get into until I saw the Kiss Brooklyn Bridge reunion show, and they knocked well, that that whole reunion episode right there. You know, it was just five songs, but they knocked that out of the park. But I didn't know that song very well. I didn't care for that song until I heard that. And I was like, holy shit, that is great. <laughs> never really caught on with me. I mean, I appreciate it for what it is, but just, I don't know, just never did, never did do anything for me. I like that song. Actually, it's on my list. So cool. Cool. Dennis. All right. So this song here is one of my favorite all time songs. And it's done by something, Bobby, that, Jeff just brought up a while ago, and it's Rick Springfield. Rick Springfield put out an album here a while back, it's, and it's very, very hard to find. It's not on Spotify. I couldn't buy it on Amazon, but iTunes has it, and I was able to buy it digitally through iTunes just actually last week. And the album is called The Day After Yesterday. These are songs that he loves and wished that he would have wrote himself. And the song is, of course, uh, Jerry Rafferty's Baker Street. He does. A, I mean, Foo Fighters have done a done a version of it. He's done a version of it. This album, if you ever get a chance to get this album, I mean, it's got. I'm not in, the... it, it's called the, the Day After Yesterday. Gotcha. And it's got uh, I'm Not in Love by 10 CC Under the Milky Way, Life in a Northern Town, Broken Wings, Human, Holding On to Yesterday, Baker Street, Waiting for a Girl Like You. I mean, it's got a ton of fucking songs on it and it's it's just it's an album that's great from from the song one to the end there's a couple of songs like i think let's go out tonight no one for you miss unites i don't know those blue rose then of course he does imagine at the very end but there's 14 songs on this album and they're all really really good so it's a good record just to sit and listen to his voice is so good but uh, that's on apple it's on apple yes i bought it through apple now, like I said, I, I went to, I was going to buy it off yeah, of Amazon and could not find it on Amazon, Spotify, YouTube doesn't even have, YouTube has three songs off of it and that's it. There is pe- you know, people that's made them, but you just can't find it. You just can't, you can't find Baker Street at all unless you find a live version of it. Yeah, yeah I, I don't can. see, I don't see it in Apple Music on my phone. You don't? Nope. It's not listed. That's where I bought, well, is it, the, is it the music app you go through? Typically, yeah, that's what I mean. That's where I got it from. It's from uh, recently added. That's music, you know, whatever music. See, they, they got rid of iTunes on fucking iPhones now. It's just called music, right? Apple Music, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's where I bought it from. I purchased hmm. it from there. And yeah, uh, I'll see it. Hmm, I'll have to look again. I just bought it this week, so it was nine ninety nine. Anyway, all right, Bill. The day after yesterday. Okay. All right, so um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and stick with Ace Freely and just move this along. Okay. Cool. <laughs> oh, the same song? <laughs> yeah, because I had I, it was the next one, so I'll just use the ditto. So I'm just gonna <laughs> say <laughs> ditto. We got a match. There we go. Good there job, go. Jeff. <laughs> First match of the day. There you go. All right. My number seven is kiss-related. Anthrax, again, another one of my favorite cover bands. I'm not a big fan of Anthrax's original. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. You know, I'm a bigger fan of their covers than I am. And they have done several Kiss covers, but my all-time favorite Kiss cover is the song Parasite. Yes. And that can be found 
I know for sure on their Attack of the Killer Bees release, and it is also on one of their live releases from the late 80s or early 90s. And I remember seeing in an interview once, someone asked Scott Ian about their Kiss covers, and he was like, you know, we never intended to record Parasite, but, you know, every we would go somewhere, we would be playing at like a little shithole in France, and then we would be in New York, and somebody was like, are you guys going to play Parasite tonight? I was like, how do you find out about this stuff? Because that was way before this thing we call the internet, you know? <laughs> But did he even do know, a cover of She also? They did an, yeah, She, hmm? that was on. Was it on the Kiss on? Uh, that was on uh, Kiss My Kiss Ass. My ass? Okay, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. they, they like I said, they've had a ton. They do Pipeline by the Ventures. Yeah, that, that whole <laughs> Attack awesome. of the Killer Bees is great. That's it's great. almost every one of those songs are cover songs. Yeah, I have that on the yeah. CD. It's really, yeah. really, really good. Yeah, I bought. I've actually got two versions of it because I bought one version at Walmart and I didn't know at the time Walmart only sold censored CDs. Oh, so when I, I got it, you know, the song uh, Milk, Ode to Billy. Right. You know, the line, one of the lines is, I wish I had some goddamn milk and half the fucking song is, I wish I bzz, bzz, bzz. <laughs> so I took it back and I'm like, this is garbage. And like, you open it, we're not taking it back. So Walmart, you know, fucked a lot of people that way. <laughs> but I digress. Number six. This is back to me already. Yes. All right, Jeff. Jeff. Uh, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. I love rock and roll. Cool. Just really didn't know. That's one of those, like, I did not know this was a cover until mm-hmm. years later. But just great job done on it. Yeah. That, that was another one that, you know, Joan Jett is a, she is also a great cover artist. And we'll just leave that there for now. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis. All right. This is a song that I did not know existed up until this week because I went down the rabbit hole of covers on Spotify and found it's like, <laughs> oh my God, there's just a shit ton of great stuff. It's a it's a band called At Vance. Never heard of them before, and they do the logical song by Supertramp. Ah. And it's fucking fantastic. It it rocks balls. It's not too, it's not overly rocked, but it's done powerful. And the singer is, is just fantastic. I don't know what these, who these guys are, but they're fan fucking tastic. I don't know if they've had anything else. I'm going to kind of look, kind of do a little research on them. But once again, it's on my, it's on my covers uh, playlist on Spotify. If you're wanting to hear it, but logical song by at Vance. Right on. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. William. All right, um, next up, I've got a little Michael Jackson cover for Smooth Criminal, 1988. Mm-hmm. Um, it was when it originally came out, Alien Amp Farm in 2001. Just rocked that song up a little bit. It's a great song. It is a great song. That is the only Alien Ant Farm song I even like. That's the only <laughs> one I even know. <laughs> so. Well, I have, I have their CD, and it's called Anthology. <laughs> which I thought that was pretty clever. Very clever. Everybody knows Alan likes a good pun or a play on words. Yeah, our band used, actually used to do a cover of the cover of, I mean, it was the like cover. their version of the cover from Michael Jackson, but yeah, it is a great song. They do a good job on it. Right on. All right. Uh, number six for me is the first Beatles cover <clears throat> appearance for me. And that's Motley Cruz version of Helter Skelter. Good song. And, and yeah. what's funny, and it's going to have to be an honorable mention because I didn't think of it at the time, but you said something about uh, Aerosmith covers earlier, and they did a cover I really like. All right, we have reached the halfway point. What's your number five, Jeff? Uh, it, this is a struggle because I have two covers from this artist that I really like, and I'm going with the one that's a little more popular, uh, Manfred Mann, Blinded by the Light. Um. He did two great covers of Bruce Springsteen songs that makes you forget that Bruce Springsteen even did them. And that's, you know, probably the more popular of them. And, you know, one of the best misquoted lyrics of all time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yep. there are actually two misquoted lyrics in there. I don't know what he's actually saying, but he is not saying little early birdie gave my anus curly whirly. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> have to ask Bruce. Uh, 
That's I the way I that, sing it. So I don't know that Bruce knows what it means. <laughs> well, since you picked Blinded by the Light, that is no longer my number two pick. I will add one of my honorable mentions in there, <laughs> which is great. So that means we've got two. My hands disappeared. <laughs> we have got two matchups now tonight. Cool. Happens every time we do a show. Nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. Top, yeah. uh, top 10. It's amazing. Dennis. Okay. So I there is another album that I found a few years ago. That is another cover tune album. That's fucking fantastic. And you could actually put the, any song off this album <laughs> on this list, but I only picked one. And it's an album by Shaw Blades called Influence. Oh, that is a great oh, album. Oh, yeah. yeah and record. their version of California Dreaming. I always liked the Mama and Papa's version of it, but this, their voices together. Did you guys, did any of you guys pick any Shaw Blades? No. no. Okay. So just for people who don't know, the, the, the album Influence has Summer Breeze, Time of the Season, Your Move, which is a Yes song. And it's, that was actually on the list and I had to change it out because I ended up liking California Dreaming more. Uh, I am a rock, lucky man, the sound of silence on a carousel, dirty work by uh, Steely Dan, uh, for what it's worth, and dance with me with, from Orleans. And those two guys together, I mean, they could sing, like I said, they could sing the phone book, and you'd be like, oh my God, that's great. You know, <laughs> and it, it, but they do a great, they're one of the best cover band or cover people that I've We know uh, what you're heard. saying. Anyway, <laughs> fantastic album if you get a chance. But yeah, California Dreaming is my number six. Yeah. Right. My number six oh, is California Dream is your number five. Five, right. I had it wrong. I changed okay, it. Okay. My number five then. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known Dennis had messed it up. I shouldn't even have paid any attention. <laughs> I can't uh, count. No good okay, count. Um, so my number five is uh bad the song Bad Company. I originally put out Bad Bad Company nineteen seventy four. It's the five finger death punch version from two thousand nine. Again, dark brooding just but sounds so great one of those songs when you hear it you gotta you gotta crank that up it's gotta go high (laughs) there you go all right right on turn the page turn the page no it's not on my list no i gotta Uh, turn i gotta turn the page (laughs) (laughs) my number five is an elton john song and it was covered by these guys, right? This guy right here. I said these guys. We all know Wasp is Blackie Lawless. Right. Uh, Saturday night's all right for fighting. I didn't know that was a cover until I got the uh, one of his greatest hits compilations from like 2000 or something. But he he did a really really good job on that. It's it doesn't really stray very far from the original version. He just kind of hard rocks it up a little bit. And um, that is my number five. And uh, we will hear more about Elton John later in the show. Jeff, number four. Number four, and this was one I was like, there's no way that the band that originally did this actually did this song. It's a uh, Nazareth, Love Hurts, originally done by the Everly Brothers. It's like, no, nah, no, nah, that can't be right. But oh, did not, it, did not it, know it, that was a cover. I, it is. I, you know, I forgot about that, but I have heard that before. Yeah. The original yeah. one, and was like, I thought it was somebody had done it after Nazareth, and it just butchered right. the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what I yeah. thought. But Nazareth, but I realized, yeah. But, but Nazareth, yeah, they did it more than justice. It's it's their song. Oh, yeah, for and sure. It's just a great tune. Did not yeah. know it was a cover. I have, to, I have to look that up and see how bad it is. I forgot that was a cover, but I do remember I do yeah, remember that's the Everly hearing Brothers. about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Huh, well, well, but I don't think the Everly Brothers wrote the song. I think someone else wrote it for them. Maybe. Possibly. They, I know that, uh, and I cannot think of the name of the guy, but there's a guy that wrote several of the Everly Brothers hits. Yeah. Wasn't unusual back then. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty common. Dennis. Right. Number four for me is another one that I heard this week for the first time. Damn, and it's a band called Ra, R-A. I don't know if you've ever heard of these guys. They're um, they're just kind of a, I don't know. They just, they've, they've had a couple of hits, but nothing really big. They do a version of Every Little Thing She Does is Magic by the Police. Nice. Hmm. And it's not overly done. It's pumped up a little bit. It rocks. Sounds great. I mean, it's just a... They did it really good justice and, and just took it to another level. But uh, if you get a chance, take a listen to it. It's pretty cool. 
that's all I got for that. That's all I got to say about that. I was going to do the same thing. <laughs> I know you were, so I beat you to it. <laughs> I'm like, he's sliding, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bill. All right. So, yeah, so for me, I'm going to go back to Van Halen because, like, like you said early, Jeff, they're – Van Halen covered a bunch of a bunch of them. I had three of them on here. I had to like, <laughs> I had to like put them down. Uh, I think my van, my favorite Van Halen cover though, is "Dancing in the Streets." Um, originally covered by Martha and the Vandellas in 1965, and then uh, Van Halen did it in '82, and then David Bowie and Mick Jagger did it in 1985. So that that song has been covered more than once. But uh, I just thought it was it was it's got a cool. I think it got Eddie Van Haland up a little bit and got a, a really cool vibe out of it. So, yeah. Eddie Van Haland up. I like that. Yep. And metallic eyes. What did you say it was? Metallicized. I did. Metallicized. Metallicized. <laughs> Metallicized. There you go. I'm making up words today. <laughs> I was going to say. You should, uh, you know, uh, tag Lars Ulrich on <laughs> Twitter or something with no. that phrase. <laughs> he, he'll he'll, he'll want to charge he'll, me for it or something like that. Is. He'll charge me for something he never did create. So you can't do that. <laughs> Jackass. <laughs> All right. Hey, my Lars, number four. Uh, what did you say, Dennis? I said, hey, Lars, you want to come on the show? <laughs> <laughs> no. That'd be funny. My number four is uh, one of two Elton John songs or Elton songs Elton John covered okay. in this episode. And number four is Pinball Wizard. And that was from yeah. the who? The Who, the musical Tommy. And it is my understanding, again, mm -hmm. the internet is never wrong, that uh, originally they had planned on Rod Stewart covering that song for the, the movie or the musical or whatever it was. And Elton John talked him out of it and then stole it away from him or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> huh. So I don't know if that's true or not, but it makes for a really good story. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good anyway. Yeah. Cool. Number three. Getting close to the end here. Yep, and this kind of goes hand-in-hand in hand with The Who because it's a Pete Townsend cover, and the backstory on it is hilarious because it's a he covered a song called Save It For Later that was originally done by the English Beat. And um, I think hmm. legend is, and I've actually heard uh, the, the the writer, uh, Dave um, Wakeling, um, give his story about this, is that he actually got called by Pete Townsend because Pete Townsend couldn't figure out how to play it. And, <laughs> and, it, and it's because um, the uh, guitar tuning was wrong. It's like, oh, wow. <laughs> he messed up the guitar tuning. Uh, Dave messed up the guitar tuning. And it sounded great. He, hey, it's a great song. We're going to do it. But when he first got the call, he he's like, ah, no, somebody's playing a joke on me. And mm -hmm. so Pete Townsend had to call him back. And then when you also hear Pete Townsend go, well, I'm here with David Gilmore. And we can't figure out how to play your song. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> but it's off of a uh, deep end live which is a uh, cool. um he townsend you know it's it's considered a solo album by him but he considers it a band and uh, david gilmore plays on it as well um but um pete was nice enough to um invite dave and his um mom to come to a show where he debuted it and gave him some uh credit and that's like he was like yeah that was the coolest moment of my life Very being cool. called by well, pete townsend going i can't figure out how to play your song what was the name of that song again, Jeff? Save it for later. It was like an '80s kind of mellow guitar based. Uh, it's it's kind of second wave ska, so it's got some horns huh. in the background of it. I'll have to check it out. Um, it was an it. MTV like medium rotation for a while. Okay, I probably when I when I hear it, I probably, you'll oh, hear yeah. it. And you'll go, oh, that song. Yeah, I just, I just the name doesn't strike me for some reason. Cool. All right, my number three, another one of my favorite songs. And our band used to play this version of it every every time we gigged, and I love playing it. And it's the Atari's version of The Boys of Summer. Mm -hmm. I think that is a fantastic version of that song. I mean, Don Henley's version is very, very good. Don't get me wrong, but this, <laughs> it's 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 two different songs, really. Don's is more of a it's a little easier. Atari's put a little put a little punk in it, you know, and a little sounds sounds good. A lot more guitar. I dig that one. Yep. That's a good one. Your turn, Bill. So number three, Bill. All right. So um I'm gonna go with I've got I've got eleven on here, so I have an extra one. So okay. I'm gonna go with go to eleven. I'm gonna go. Oh, I'm gonna go with this one. So um in twenty twenty, uh our uh let's see, um George Lynch and Brian Pilson put out a um 
Did I say Brian Pilsen? You did. Yeah, no, you said Jeff. I meant no, no I didn't. Said I said Brian. Oh, I was thinking and Jeff. Somebody. Jeff <laughs> Pilsen is what I meant. Um, put out a, an album called Heavy Hitters, and it's a re- it was it was all remakes that they did. So um this is Kiss, though they did they Kiss by Prince. Mm. Um and it was it's a really good if you haven't heard it, it's a really good song. Um definitely got the Prince groove to it, but it's definitely a heavier, heavier uh groove. So um give it a shot, uh shout out to listen to. Well, you couldn't ask for two more talented musicians to put that together. Nope. All right. My number three is my second Elton John song, or my second song that Elton John covered, and that's the Beatles' Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Uh, you know, Elton did the same with this that he did with Pinball Wizard. He made it his own. And um, from what I understand, if you listen good enough, you can hear John Lennon singing background vocals. Hmm. Interesting. Internet said it again, so it must be true. <laughs> must be true. <laughs> it's gonna be true. Cool. All right, we're up to the last two. All right. All right. Um, number two for me, uh, Jimi Hendrix experience. Um, all along the Watchtower. Just oh yeah, fantastic <laughs> song. It, it under, it can't really describe the beauty of the guitar in that. Um. And and to actually have a, a smooth voice sing the lyrics as opposed to Bob Dylan. <laughs> um love Dylan, but man, Jimmy, that's Jimmy's song too. I mean, he just kills. Yeah, that was one uh, and I was being a smart ass one day. I did not realize that was a Bob Dylan song and I started singing it Bob Dylan style. <laughs> and then somebody was like, You know, Bob wrote that, right? No. <laughs> <I did not. laughs> Wonder how many other songs I can butcher that Bob actually did write. <laughs> cool. All right. My number two is from an album of covers again. This is from another band who knows how to do covers right. Singer is fucking fantastic. Matter of fact, he was on the show last week. And it's the album Giver by Took. And they do all Canadian band covers. And I had two. I actually switched this one out 30 fucking minutes ago because I, between the two, I had listened to both of them. But anyway, they do a version of um, uh, of uh, On the Loose by Saga. Nice. That's just fucking, his voice is just unfucking believable Originally, I had My Girl by Home uh, Honeymoon yep. Suites, which <laughs> is also a, a great one. song. Um, but, you know, they do, this, this album has Roller. Um, has fantasy, um, working for the weekend, uh, go for a soda. It's just, it, oh, no, I'm sorry, New Girl Now was the one I was thinking was. It was not, not did I say that? We, we knew what you meant. Yeah, anyway, yeah. My Girl's <laughs> not the one. Yeah, it's, it's New Girl Now by uh, Honeymoon Sweet. But anyway, yeah, great album. If you get a chance to, I love the I love the cover. <laughs> They've got their name of the band in written in snow with their piss. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's but that great. is a great that is a great record it that's is from from front Every to song. back you just put it on and just let her fly yeah yeah they do a great and i'm telling you what they they hit it as close as you can get on all the songs it's just fucking yep. plus the extra yeah good yeah all right um so i'm gonna go with uh american woman originally uh done by the guess who in 1978 and lenny kravitz did a great version in 1998. So um, that's that. Uh, that's probably the only Lenny Kravitz song. Yeah, I listen to that record every now and then, but not very often. But that song, just the drive is that in that song is just incredible. So you mean you didn't pick the Crocus version of American Woman? I did not pick the Crocus <laughs> version of anything. Got all about that. I, I did not even. Put, I didn't. I didn't pick the Crocus version of Ballroom Blitz or any of that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, they did that one too. I forgot. Yeah, they did. Yeah. I'm not picking the Crocus version. <laughs> well, regardless, <laughs> help wanted ages of rock new co host. No <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number two pick got knocked off the list, but since um, since Jeff and I got a pick that were the same, I moved um, Manford Man's Blinded by the Light out of that spot and I put Huey Lewis in the news, heart and soul. I didn't, was that a remake? I didn't that, know that, that is that is uh, that a remake. It was recorded, and I talked about this on a show several 
months, years, weeks. I don't know. It's been a well, while. I was, I was this yeah. day old whenever we I was this out. day old when I learned. <laughs> when I learned. Was a cover. Yeah. <laughs> Did not know it was a cover. So that was that a fifties cover then? No, it, the song was written in the eighties. Oh, really? Yeah, it was wow. written in the eighties, and there were two other bands that covered that song. Huh? Had no idea. Huh. But uh, but there are two other bands besides Huey Lewis, but uh, none of the other covers really took off. But then when the Huey Lewis version come out, oh. it kind of skyrocketed. Yeah, and they did. A, they had a really good tight harmonies. I mean, I think yeah. that's. I mean, the, even the, the you know they harmonies always did some kind of a, wise. Everything was good with them. They always had some kind of a doo wop kind of right. stuff. I yeah. saw them a couple of times live, and they, that was always the best part of the show when they would stop and just do some acapella doo wop stuff. It was awesome. You yeah. know, and just a side note on that, my buddy Rodney and M at one point tried to get a Huey Lewis uh, tribute band together <laughs> just in the last couple of years. That would have he been fun was, to he see. Said, yeah. He said it was. He yeah. said it was the hardest thing he's ever done in his life. Said it was really tough playing that music. It's really with the horns and the and the uh, you know just everything. And they had some really good players that were yeah, in they did. this thing. Yeah. And I mean, as far as Rodney's band had some really good musicians that were you know could play. And he said it was tough. And they ended up giving up. I mean, it, it just it fell apart. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's hard to do a band anyway, let alone a band right. that's that right. intricate. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, my, one of my I guess the favorite part of that song for me is the guitar guitar riff going into the chorus. Right. You know, it's just, there's some, something to that groove that just really makes Alan more excitable than he normally is. <laughs> that's more we information gotta tell, we gotta than tell I need. Laura, that's not, the... not that kind of excitable. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta tell Laura. Somebody call her. <laughs> Did anybody do a cover of excitable boy? It oh, puts God. your team. It puts a tingle Probably. in your jeans, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works, man. Makes my yeah, tingle tingle. Nobody's <laughs> judging. All um, right, let's move along. We're up to our number one picks now. Number one. So, Jeff, what's your numero uno? All right, a little backstory on this. This is like one of the few like metal songs that my wife knows the words to. And it's because <laughs> she only knows like the original version. And actually, it was like, is this John Baez? It's like, oh, no, not John Baez. But this is definitely a... Turn it all the way up as soon as it comes on is uh, Judas Priest doing Diamonds and Rust. Yes. Hey, that made like, it on my radio show. Too. Two that, complete different songs. <laughs> yeah. so that's it. It's one that's like, I, if, you know, I do the the show on A to Z where it's all live music. I would play that every week if I thought I could get away with it, which I could. <laughs> but, you know, it's it, I just love the song Our and the way that college. they just made it their own. Yeah, our band in college used to play that song. It's a fucking fun song to play, yeah. and it's just a great, like I said, it's a great, it's a great live song, really good live song. Very good. Uh, well, when when Judas Priest did it, <laughs> yeah, not Joan. <laughs> oh, I I give Joan credit too, but now you know Judas Priest just. I'd rather hear Judas Priest. Yeah. <laughs> no, All right, Dennis. Dennis. All right, so I I just the only reason I use this song. It was because it's the first song I heard from these guys. But the epitome of cover songs is me first in the Gimme Gimme's. They have eight albums of cover songs. And if you don't know who these guys are, I've mentioned them on the show a hundred times. They are people who take popular songs and do punk versions of everything. First song I ever heard from them was uh, Natural Woman. <laughs> and they, you know, they do, you know, you make me feel like a natural woman. And I'm telling you what, it's fucking fantastic. But they do... You know, like I said, they've got uh, a bunch of different ones. They do. There's an album of country tunes. They do like Jolene, <laughs> the punk. <for laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and they're just they are a fun. I want to see these guys live, and they play all the time. But they play all the time in Europe. They're never here. I mean, every time I see them, I follow them on Facebook. Oh, we had another tour. I'm like, yeah. No, it's in Czechoslovakia. You know, some kind of shit. It's like, it's like, God damn it, get here. I want to see this. But you need to get. Well, if you if you listen to my interview with Todd last week, he'll tell you. You just oh, I know. You just got to go to Europe, and you can hop on a train and go to forty five shows in a day. Yeah, because you can go to you, know, you can hit it. <laughs> you're three true. hours from I don't know how many different countries. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there another little snip about these guys is that Chris Shiflett from Foo Fighters' brother plays guitar in that band, and Chris actually, whenever he is not on the road or with Foo Fighters or playing with Heavy Chevy or whatever that 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 band he other ones he's got. He 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 does play some some uh, gigs with them, so that's kind of cool. That's very cool. 
They're a fun band, though. They're super fun. They're live. They that live. go to YouTube and just put me first in the Gimme Gimme's. They have whole concerts at these big festivals, and they're fun as fuck. I mean, they just get the crowd going, and they're hilarious. Right on. All right, Bill, what's your number okay, one pick? So this is not number one. This is just one on the list. but It's uh, number one now, damn it. It is, damn it. it well, okay. So, <laughs> I, it, it, all right. And, and I went completely soft on this, just so you know. I'm so sure that's what that's she not said. The first time that's happened. <laughs> no, it's, it's, what she it's, said. I'm just gonna be. I mean, I'm just gonna be straight up on. It's not a problem. It'll all come back. You know, they have a pill for that. Enough meds will be all right. Anyway, <laughs> so um, I went with uh, "I Will Always Love You" by Dolly Parton. They got covered by oh. you, Whitney Houston. And I, yeah. when I think of cover songs that just change, that just you know, just erased. I don't know all other other cover songs. That, that'll be the biggest cover song ever, I think, in the history. I mean, I just think it will be. But yeah. um, the, I I I just couldn't not have that on the list. And in oh, both in both versions are phenomenal. Right. Um, and for you know Dolly Parton, who originally did the song and wrote the song, and 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 eventually went, you know what, um, this is your song. Yeah. That. You know that that to to say that that's that's pretty freaking incredible. Yeah. So. And another little information about this is that if you've watched the Sonic Highways uh, series from Dave Grohl, when he did go to Nashville, he talked to Dolly Parton, and Elvis mm -hmm. was supposed to have covered that tune at one point. Elvis and um, the Colonel came to Nashville to the studio. They met up there, and the Colonel, right before Elvis went into the booth, the Colonel says, by the way, when Elvis sings this song, I own, I'm going to buy, I want to buy the rights to it. And she says, I'm not selling the rights to this song. And he says, well, Elvis is not singing this song. And they left and got back on a plane and left. I would love to heard Elvis sing that song. I, I think that would have been interesting to see what, how yeah. he would have, he would have done that. But she was a very smart woman to do what yeah. she did. You know what Respect I would have loved that. to have heard? What's that? Her telling him off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep with them old titties on it. No. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, the cool thing, the cool thing about that is someday there'll be a biopic about right about her. Right. And about and I, you know, I know there's been shows about her when she was growing up and stuff like that. But right. I think from a music industry piece, because you know, I think being a woman in in the in the country music world, sure. especially, and especially during that time, she made some phenomenal decisions that really set her up forever i mean you know obviously absolutely but, and i don't and a lot of people didn't do that i and mean I, they, and I also love you know because she grew up as dirt poor as she did when she got rich and she got famous she did not let that go to her head mm -mm. she donates to a shit ton of charities yep you know i work at the library and she has a, a one of her charities is she gives books to kids for childhood literacy yeah. you know well, so. she's 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 a she'll be a saint at some point for what she's done because like they gonna make her a saint faster than it made mother Teresa a saint exactly <laughs> another little another little funny thing i don't know you know i heard this actually she, she internet, has told she no she's actually told the story i don't know it makes for a good makes for a good discussion but she said she was listening through some cassette tapes back in or some tapes back in the day and supposedly Jolene and I will always love you was on the same tape. And she thinks that she wrote the songs on the same day. That could wow. be, yeah. It'd be a pretty damn good day. You know what? That's, <laughs> that's oh, a what? damn good day. <laughs> okay. I'm done. <laughs> Shut the book. Walk away. <laughs> but seriously. I mean, if that, if that is a true story and you wrote those two songs on the same day, you are a <laughs> God son, you know, came down and went, Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but a good story. Don't know if it's true or not, but it, it makes for good conversation. You know? Yep. There you go. Good love, Dolly. Yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap this up with Big Al's number one cover song. Uh, as mentioned earlier in the show, Joan Jett is one of my favorite cover artists. The song, Do You Want to Touch, off of her, um, I believe it's on her Bad Reputation album. Uh, that song was originally written by Gary Glitter, and I had no idea really until this century that that was even a cover song. Because well, coming a, from him, that come, has a complete different yeah. meaning, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it does now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, 
that's another one of those songs that she basically made it her own. I did look his song up once I learned about it. His mm-hmm. version of it is okay, but it's no Joan Jett. Right. You know, the only thing that upsets me about that is, you know, all of the crap that he got himself into whenever she performs it or whatever, he still gets royalties from it, you know, right. and I'm pretty sure he's in a Korean prison or something. somewhere. Yeah, he he'll is. Probably, he's locked he'll up. He'll probably die there. He ain't going to be bothering anybody. <laughs> but we're not going to leave this on a down note. Do can you I... want to touch by Joan Jett? What do you got to say there, Dennis? Oh, I was going to say, are we going to do some, uh, some we'll, honorable We'll do mentions? some honorable mentions. Okay, yes. cool. I didn't know if you were going to. I thought maybe yeah. you done. And... Have you got any honorable mentions there? To me? Jeff? Oh, <laughs> I was I looking at you. At... I don't know. Well, I, I, you said, you on my screen, you're not. You're pointing at Dennis. So, oh yeah, I thought you said deer, which I had a lot, a lot of questions about yeah. that. But whatever, um, not a judger. It, it, can I can I run them down? Like just sure. Yeah, go for it. Know, yeah, I because I probably have I can probably have ten that I can yeah. just throw out there that are just sure go for it. Obscure. Okay. Um, the punk band called the Circle Jerks mm-hmm. that did a cover. It's called um, Golden Shower of Hits. <laughs> I think I think Dennis was in Dennis was in that band at one time. I love that. I love it. I love it just and, for the um, name. And, and, and um, he was in the middle of the circle. And I think it's, yeah. I think the subtitles like Jerks on Forty Five. Um, wow. so it oh. came out around that same time, but it's them covering like songs from the seventies. So they're doing like Having My Baby in a punk version. I'll have to and, nice. uh, look that up. Yeah, I'll look that one up because it, it's it's classic. Let me, let me write that down. So. Um, what another one that kind of got bumped off my list, which killed me because it's he's like my boy is uh, Billy Idol doing Money Money. Yeah, he just put a great beat to the back, yeah, to to it. Yep. I did, and I kind of handcuffed this one because I I think Al, I think I've told you this one time that um this is like one of the best live concert moments that of a concert I've been to is the Colt doing Born to Be Wild. Oh yeah, good. yeah. I played they, that one on my show last week. Or yeah, because when they when they did it live, and it, the whole thing is like they opened for Billy Idol when I saw them live, and I only knew the Colt as like this goth type band, um, so I was not expecting them to. I I hadn't heard the album Electric yet, so I wasn't expecting them to rock so hard. But Great when they album. kicked into Born to Be Wild, it was like another level. Yeah, you know, hard so to that, find I, too. I, <laughs> yep. Um, so props for that one. Um, Another another punk one. Uh, it, Ramones do a lot of great covers, um, mm-hmm. but I really like the way they do. Uh, do you want to dance? Just because it's like not a song that you would expect them to do, mm-hmm. and um, I think they did a great job with that one. Um, looking more on my list, I'm trying to rule out some of them that are like, um, you know, more mainstream. Um, but I I do like Jay Giles Band did a cover of I Do, which is an old like older doo wop mm-hmm. song. Um, Jay Giles does a lot of covers, mostly blues songs, but that was one that they did a particularly good job on. Um, I, throwing this out there because I had mentioned uh, Manfred Mann earlier. The, he put out an album, I believe, like 1980 called Chance. Um, and he does a cover for you that is just brilliant. Mm-hmm. And um, again, much better than what Bruce did. And Bruce does a lot of great stuff, but he, mm-hmm. Manfred Mann just really nailed that one. Um, what else? I have one more. On here is oh uh, two other things that I uh, three things I guess that I wrote down. The band called the Sword did a cover of She by Kiss. Um, Sword recently broke up, um, but they um, uh, they they do a really good job on She. Um, mm. Pretty close to the original, but mm. not a song I would have expected them to do. Um, but they do a really good cover of it. Um, oh, <laughs> this is one that is like I, I I I'm real close to playing it on my show, and I probably will soon. Um, do you remember the band Big Country from the eighties? Oh yeah, yeah. they yep. do a cover of "Don't Fear the Reaper." Really, and really, just the fact that <laughs> wow. somebody did. I want to hear that. Actually, is oh, is pretty cool. That's interesting. Right. Yeah, they do some other covers too. They do um a cover of uh, Springsteen "I'm on Fire." That's really good. But the, huh. the the whole you're willing to tackle on "Don't Fear the Reaper" and actually put it on record is huh. uh I'll have to look for that ballsy. That's very cool. <laughs> And then the last thing is that I, I can't really pr- pick one particular cover, but um, Tom Petty's uh, and the Heartbreakers um, Fillmore album that they just put out, um, mm. tons of covers on that and mm. all very well done. And some of them he, he, he has like original artists on stage because that was like a, that was like a, I want to say like a nine or 10 day run of shows that they made into one album. Mm, um, cool. But 
but it's probably it's probably equally split. I've got the three um three disc vinyl set. Um it's probably half covers and half originals. And just cool. all of them are well done. So if I can plug one album to get if you want to hear a lot of decent covers and live, that's a recent one that's great. Cool. Cool. Dennis, what's your right. So in no specific order, these are just ones that like I said were on the list and they got up and down, up and down. All right, uh, there is a version of Take On Me by uh, Real Big Fish. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a ska version of it, but it's really cool. I, I really like it. it was, it's just a got too, a good version of that song, too. It's just mm-hmm. a little too far out there. Um, <laughs> Newfound Glory made a version of Don't You Forget About Me, which we actually did cover in our band, the last band I was in. It's a really kind of a harder version of that song. Foo Fighters is another band who do a lot of covers, and they do a version of Have a Cigar. Uh, by Pink Floyd, it's on. They put out some albums during COVID, and they just got like they're little EPs, and they're all on Spotify. This is off the album Zero Nine 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 Twenty Five. They got numbers. That's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Metallica. I'm gonna throw one in there. Stone Cold Crazy by uh, That is badass. Yeah, by Queen. There's a lot of them. there's a lot of them. Well, yeah. that was on that uh, Garage Days. Garage uh, Inc. Or, yeah, Garage Inc. Yeah, that was on there. Of course, I mentioned earlier Parasite by Anthrax. You can't go wrong with that song. Uh, the album that I came across this morning that I forgot about was The Reels, Reels 1 and 2 by Tesla. Mm-hmm. They, um, they're, and Seasons of Wither is one of my favorite Aerosmith songs, and they do a version that's really good. His voice is perfect for that, and it's, it's a really good song. Um, another uh, great, there is a, I can't, I can't read this because I don't have my, my other glasses He's on. Got anyway, the wrong glasses anyway. On. Death Leopard did a <laughs> did a song called or a album called Yeah. They do a version of Blondie's Hanging on a Telephone. Great, great, great yeah. song. Um, the band Cake. I don't know if you guys are yep. are familiar with them. They do a war a thing of War Pigs by Black Sabbath, and it's funky. It's completely different than, than the original song, but it's really cool. Um, also. Faith No More does a version of War Pigs that's really, really good. And But the other song by Faith No More that I like is Easy. They do a version of the Commodore's Easy, and yeah. it's pretty fantastic. Um, another one that I thought was really interesting was the Weezer Toto Switch Out, yeah. where Weezer did Africa, and then Toto did uh, Hash Pipe. Hash Pipe. Yeah. And to me, I think Toto won on that one. I think that their version of the Weezer was better than the Weezer's version of, of Toto. <laughs> But there is a, t- and like I said, I ran into a uh, another um, playlist. I was just telling you guys about before we started. It is, um, I can't, I can't find it now. But anyway, oh, it's called Covers, comma Better Than the Original, dot 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 maybe, and that is a playlist on Spotify. And there's 15 hours of cover tunes. So I'm going to be busy Jesus. listening to just turning it on in the garage. And most of the ones that I picked were on that list, but there's a ton of shit that I didn't see. So I'm gonna have to. I, I, I'm a sucker for a good cover song. So, fun job. Yeah. All right. I only had a. Uh, so I only had a couple left. So one was uh, uh, Amy Winehouse's "Valerie." It was covered mm-hmm. by the Zantons in 2006. I, I like I like Amy Winehouse, but I like that song a lot. And then um, to you, uh, the Foo Fighters, uh, DGs. They're uh, oh yeah, I forgot about cover that. For the, their cover for the cover for the the BG stuff from I Saturday. Forget. Yeah, from Saturday Night Fever. Just good stuff. I've got that album. Actually, I got that from Record Day. They, I'm they, surprised uh, you didn't. I'm surprised you didn't. Know. I was expecting it too. I was he expecting forgot. it. I'm like, he didn't. How did he not get I that? I was he actually forgot. expecting him to give kudos to the Foo Fighters Baker Street. Well, you know what? I honestly. That one is on my honorable mentions list. Yeah, I, I, they do a fairly good job of that. I like their, if I, if I had to pick another band, or band you know, if I had to pick another Foo Fighter cover, it's probably Band on the Run. They, I think they do a great version of that, the yeah. the uh, wings version or cover the wings. Yeah. Yep. But they're um, but this have a cigar is really good too if you get a chance to hear that. Anyway. Jeff, I I don't know if I dismissed it when you were talking about your honorable mentions. Did you say you knocked Devo off of your list? I did. Which, <laughs> which Devo song? Uh, it? Satisfaction. Oh, okay. Did they? Yeah. Didn't they also cover working, uh, in, working a in a coal mine? mine? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's like a true cover i mean yeah. it is but it, it isn't seems yeah, like it was a tennessee william or tennessee ernie yeah. ford or one of them 
old, old ass, you know, dude from the fifties <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, probably. And then, yeah. um, they, they've done a couple other covers. They do, um, that are covers, but not really covers. Cause they try to do like a cover of the speed racer. Yeah. Um, theme song. And, um, I can't remember which one, but there's some Jimi Hendrix song that they, they, they covered that they did a pretty cool job on. Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to just Devo just completely change his shit up and this is our song now. <laughs> um, Lee, Lee Dorsey. Lee Dorsey. Working in, the, in, in, working in a coal mine. That's there the, ori- I think that's the original one. But still an old dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some other honorable mentions. Um, there you go. You know, I like when artists cover Kiss. Um, I like what Toad the Wet Sprocket did with Rock and Roll All Night on the Kiss My Ass mm-hmm. classic Kiss regrooved release. Probably my favorite one on that album. Yeah. Like that. Uh, if you've ever heard the German release, uh, there is a song by a band called The Arts, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but who gives a shit? It is uh, unholy done in German. Really, and huh. that is I've heard that version. It, it is I didn't such know a great band, version, and like right smack in the middle of it, they segue into "I Was Made for Loving You," and then back into "Unholy." But uh, hmm. gosh, oh, Aerosmith covered uh, "Come Together" by the Beatles. Yeah, you know, and yep. the, the, the you know, I think Aerosmith made that their own. You know, and of course, they, oh yeah, they covered that for the Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band movie. Yeah, which was a big giant turd. It was almost <laughs> as bad as Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. <laughs> almost just, as bad. It just had a better yeah. soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot better. <laughs> you mean right, Rip and Destroy isn't the greatest song ever? <laughs> no, it is. I think that is hilarious. I know. I like that too. I can I like plug that. one more like Beatles cover, and this kind of goes back to Rick Springfield. His original band is called Zoot. And yeah. they do a cover of Eleanor Rigby that is just wild. Hmm. And especially wow. when you go, that's Rick Springfield playing that guitar. That's funny. I think he was like 18 or 19 when they when they made Say it. It was Zoot. Zoot. Z-O-O-T. Huh. I'll write that down too. It's that's on funny. the you can find it on YouTube. Okay. And, and um he, he they did like a reunion show that uh Rick was nice enough to put on album. So I've played that a couple of times on my show too. Cool. Oh, I'll check that out. Well, speaking of your show, tell us about your show, your station, my station, our station. <laughs> our station. <laughs> yes. Um, a-, a-, a to Z radio. That's A to Z radio.net. The internet's biggest variety of rock, pop, and country music. As I go into uh, announcer mode. Uh, my show is called uh, Friday Live Music or Friday Night Live or whatever anybody else on the station wants to call it. Um, but I uh, Fridays, 8 o'clock Eastern. Um, my, my show is like all live cuts. Uh, occasionally I sneak one in that's not live just because it fits the theme, but I try to pick out a theme every week. Um, last night I did like a, this week in rock, uh, kind of going back to the, uh, you know, it was like, oh man, we've had a horrible January, but you know, kind of looking back, it's like, you know, you had meatloaf died <laughs> last January. You had Tom Petty that died in January. Uh, January is not a good month for uh, rock stars. Um, <laughs> And as we've seen, <laughs> you know what? it's not getting any better. Yeah, <laughs> you know what, yeah. though? Keith Richards is going, fuck January. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> him, him and Ozzy. Bring it on, bitch. Yeah, yeah. And Ozzy. And... <laughs> yep. but I, him and I, Ozzy. I, I try to do a mix of things that are like, you know, people have heard, but I try to throw in some uh, fun stuff that I've come across. Cool. Um, and just, you know, have fun with it. That's the whole idea of putting the station together is like, hey, we all have this knowledge of rock. And and all types of music, and uh, let's just let's just share it and let's just have some fun with it. Right, you mean it's cool. not to make millions of dollars. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how much has this cost us so far? Yeah, <laughs> it's about a million dollars. <laughs> Probably, you make as much as we do on the podcast. Exactly, exactly. Right. We're on the well, same you know, plan. <laughs> one of the ideas when I originally created A to Z Radio was, you know, each DJ has their idea of what they want their radio show to be. You know, so for the most part, we do not dictate what you can and can't do. Yeah. You know, so uh, like uh, Bill Elam does Lil Willie's record shelf. That's that's a great show. Except when I take it over. Well, sometimes <laughs> it's good that you, you got know, rid of Captain when, Dennis. When, that, when your that internet bastard. goes out. Yeah. Yeah. 
But <laughs> Dennis, your show was a great show. Yeah, I, know. I liked it. Show, it, it took it took a lot of time, and actually, you yeah. know, I've still got the computer. I've, unless something's changed on it, I mean, I could still got all the shit. One of these so, days, if I get the, some time, the, the password to the encoder has changed. So if you okay. decide, do you want to go back? But if on. I end up, you know, if I get some time here, you know, I might, I might do it again at some yeah. point, you know. But yeah, I would like to bring back. The, You've the, always got, got a home. You've always I know, got a home on A to Z radio. But uh, you know, we've got several great shows. I moved my show from Sunday night to Tuesdays because I got tired of competing with football. Yeah. <laughs> my problem, life gets in the way, and it's just yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's a lot of work. But anyway, plus I was doing it live, and it's kind of. It was getting nerve wracking at some points. And yeah, I we all get how much it, wine, you know, how much depending on how much wine I was we, drinking. We all night. get it. <laughs> it's like, whoa, whoa. You you were pretty good with that open mic too. <laughs> there were some there were some yeah. fun moments of. Uh, oh yeah, there's. Like, I, I had friends of mine that would listen and they would laugh. They would like, you just dropped the f bomb again. <laughs> you, multiple times my, that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> yeah, all right funny. well people if you're still hanging out with us thanks for tuning in again this week visit a a to z radio <laughs> visit ages of rock.com check out our past episodes and social media links and until next time peace out Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks.